trying to influence Iraq policy in the Congress. For more on these grassroots efforts, we are joined by two other activists. Melanie Morgan shares Move America Forward, a nonprofit group that supports the troop surge in Iraq. She also hosts a radio talk program in San Francisco. And John Soltz is co-founder and chair of VoteVets.org, an organization that supports redeployment of the troops from Iraq. He served as an Army captain in Iraq from May to September of 2003. Before we get into the substance of the discussion, I want to ask both of you whom your organization represents. Uh, John Soltz, VoteVets.org represents whom? Thank you, ma'am. Uh, VoteVets.org is, is the leading political organization in America of Iraq and Afghanistan war veterans. And not only do we, re we represent thousands of Iraq and Afghanistan war veterans, but we represent you know, over 40,000 veterans and supporter of veterans uh, across the nation. And we're working as much pro much, uh, part of a much larger coalition, uh, Americans Against Escalation in Iraq, uh, which represents uh, many uh, you know, base organizations, uh, Center for American Progress, MoveOn.org, and, and so forth. And Melanie Morgan, uh, whom do, does your organization move America forward? Whom do you speak for? Well, we have over a million people who belong to our organization, which is the largest pro-American, pro-troop organization in the United States. And we are a group that speaks loudly for the military families, um, Gold Star family members who still support the war, who still support the president and our efforts uh, to stabilize Iraq and the, the global war on terror, which is even more important in the long term. John Saltz, what does VoteVets.org want to see happen in Iraq? Well, I think the first thing we need to talk about is, since we're actually Iraq war veterans, that we're the largest uh, pro-troop organization uh, in America that supports victory uh, on the war on terror. And then basically, as you could see yesterday, I believe, Mr. Zwahiri, the number two leader of al-Qaeda, he wants us to stay in Iraq. We're strategically fixed there. When I served in Kosovo in 2000, a lot of people liked President Bush because he said our military was overextended and spread too thin with one brigade in Kosovo and 6,000 of our American troops. Now our guys in Iraq are overextended 12 to 15 months. 90% of our security assets are, assets are caught between this Shia Sunni religious war in Iraq and it's destroyed our ability to protect America. It's broken the Army and the Marine Corps and uh, what we'd like to see is, is a response for strategic redeployment out of Iraq so we can refocus on capturing and killing the people that attacked this country on 9-11. This president has empowered Iran, he has empowered our enemies in Iraq and he's undermined our troops in the field and we cannot support those policies. So just to be clear, a strategic redeployment, does that mean all troops out of Iraq and by when? Well, it means we need to find a way out of Iraq, and that's why, obviously, we're supporting the Democratic plan, and, 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 and we need to figure this out, and it's, it's more important than just troops in and troops out. I mean, when I served in Kosovo, we had 40,000 troops to protect 200,000 Serbs. That was one troop for every five civilian. In Iraq, you've got 120,000 troops for over 26 million Iraqis, adding 20,000 more is like spitting in the ocean. So it's a little more complex than in or out, but we want to get out of Iraq, and we need to do it with, with a diplomatic surge, and that's what President Bush, he's got to step up to the plate, and he's got to negotiate right. directly with Iran and Syria. And Melanie Morgan, move America forward. Uh, what do you want to see happen in Iraq? I want to see victory, and apparently the Democrats don't, because otherwise, why would you possibly conceive of funding a war in six-month increments. I would like to see Congressman Rahm Emanuel explain that plan or whatever it is that he seems to be proposing along with uh, Commander-in-Chief Nancy Pelosi to our troops directly to their face. Tell them that they are failing, that they have a failed, miserable performance, that they are losing. I'd like to see Mr. Soltz say that to the troops in the field as well. I don't think that you would get that exact same opinion from them, nor from the millions of other Americans who and wish for us troops. to succeed, to find a strategy that will work, to give it time to work, to be patient, and to win. So, just, and, I, and I'm going to have Mr. Soltz respond to that, but just to be clear, uh, you're saying you want the troops to stay how long? I want the troops to stay until the job is done. And that will be determined by our generals who are running and prosecuting this war when there have been political benchmarks that have been reached, when we have a stabilization. I, was, I have often said we've already won the war in Iraq. We have not won the peace. And that is the difficult job. The Iraqi army is working very hard to accomplish that. We are working very hard with them. We have attained many of the benchmarks already that the president set out. When we invaded Iraq, we have deposed uh, President Saddam Hussein, he's now dead. We have a, a Democrat freely elected uh, government in place. 
And we are trying now to secure that peace, and that is the difficult and grinding slog that we face. John Saltz, what do you have to say to that? Well, we are the troops, and there was nothing worse than when I was in combat in Iraq and, and a soldier that I sent on a convoy was killed, and I had to hear my president, a man who, who never had the courage to serve in Vietnam, entice my enemy with oh, words please. like, bring it on. So th th this is a very important thing. This week, VoteVets.org is, is launching a, a major, massive uh, campaign uh, component, uh, or not campaign, but an education uh, of sorts where we were running commercials across the country. And we're not just using Iraq war veterans. We're having General Batiste, the commander of the 1st Infantry Division in Iraq. Of course, President Bush, as he listens to the commanders on the ground, but General Batiste going in to four different Senate st states where there's four different senators and House districts across the entire country saying, Mr. President, you don't listen to the commanders in the field. You've put our Army and our Marine Corps in peril. And it's up to these senators to protect America and not George Bush. And that's what this is about. This is about victory no, this against al-Qaeda. Exactly we are a pro-troop organization. We well, fought we for this are country, and we do not support. As well. What we it do. is about excuse for you me, is political me, gain. I want to let that each one of you. Who your organization. I want to let yes, each one of you me. speak. So, Mr. Yes, Soltz, finish that me. sentence, and Thank then I want to hear. I, I, yes, ma'am. I have fought for this country, and I have earned my right for you to hear my opinion on this show. So, here's the bottom line. The bottom line here is that what this is about in the next two weeks isn't about these mysterious bills we keep hearing that, right. that speculated about short leashes. This is about holding accountable and moving senators right. and moving members of the House to not stand with the president because they're like they're, they're two-faced. They say to yourself, they say what? to you when you go to their office, we're with you. We're against the president and the escalation, but yet they vote for a stay of the course, anti-Al-Qaeda defeating right. policy. And that's what we're here to, to, to fix is get our troops right. out of Iraq so we can fight the war on terror. Mr.